Hey, and welcome back to Sociology. Today we are going to look at sexism, gender, and phobia. So we're going to start off with the social construction of looking at how do we do gender? How do we perform gender, right? So if you look at this image up front, we see that there is a young male-identified body who is attempting to make muscles and be strong, and then there is a female-identified body who is a princess and demure and passive. So let's think about the sociological lenses and the gender lenses, right? So let's define a couple things like gender polarization, essentialism, and androcentrism, right? We're going to get to those in just a second. Those are some key terms that we need to know about. So when we think of gender polarization or gender lenses, often we think of there's male and female, right? We have two genders which is inaccurate and harming because it erases all the different kinds of genders that we have, right? So when we look at gender, we see that there is multiple kinds of gender, but within our dominant view, we see male and female only. So let's think about androcentrism, right? So androcentrism really has masculine as the default, which means that everything is this uh, measured around the masculine or the masculine body or the male body. So everything is is measured from them. So we see that man is the standard and woman is the other, right? So everything else outside of the male identified body is the other, which then puts it at um, puts other genders at a disadvantage because they're not being represented and they're not being identified as a whole. It's an other, right? So androcentrism is having or regarding man or the male sex as central or primary, the most valuable. So we see that today within social issues in regards to male identified bodies are paid more, male identified bodies are hired more, they have more higher positions like CEOs, they are represented in our government much more than any other bodies. We look at Congress, look at presidencies, mostly white dudes, right? So then let's think of traditional sex roles. So a hierarchy on how men and women have been viewed and treated. Remember a hierarchy is kind of like a triangle shape, right? So at the very top are the people who are in power and at the very bottom are the least people in power, right? Or the people who have the least power, they generally have the most population. So when we see this hierarchy of how men and women have been viewed and treated, it has been resistant to change in society. So we have been fighting this social issue of having the female identified body and other gendered bodies being less than, and our culture really hasn't been okay with upping that, right? We see within legislature and within Congress, there's been lots of bills to try to create equitable pay between genders and bodies and not really feeling it, right? So then we see this as a function of culture and socialization. So how does socialization function to continue to perpetuate these ideas that the male body is the center while other genders are othered, right, are marginalized? So then we also see that male and female differences, difference, differences, sorry friends, so male and female differences are largely learned through socialization. So think back to those agents of socialization, right, family, government, education, religion, laws, media, all of these agents of socialization condition us to come to know what we know as gender, sex, and sexuality. So think back to all these ways that we've been taught, right? We say things like be ladylike, don't be a girl, be a man, girl some balls, things of that nature. So sexism and gender inequality. So power and male hegemony. So hegemony is the domination of other groups, right? So when we say, say male hegemony, it is a domination by the patriarchal system and by male bodies. We think of stereotyping, right? If anyone can think of hegemonic masculinity or like the one way to be masculine is 300, right? We've kind of talked about that in the past, but if you think about 300, that is like the epitome of the male body, right? Everyone's hyper-masculine, super muscly, really aggressive, raping's going on left and right, right? So we see that as the stereotype of what a male body is supposed to be like. And then we have the stereotype of women, right? So female-identified bodies are supposed to be demure and gentle and nurturing and thoughtful and emotional and talkative and illogical and unable to make decisions, not rational, 
So we see that that really boxes both genders, both male and female genders, and it doesn't even start to address or honor any other gender construction. We're going to look at sexism and employment. We're going to look at unequal pay for equal work. And for minority women and other genders, there's such a large wage gap, right? So female identified bodies who are white often make between like 71 and 79 cents on the dollar. For other uh, minority bodies, we see that becoming less and less. We're going to look at the rate of sexual assault in regards to gender. We're going to look at sexual harassment and then this idea of homemaking and the invisible income. So we're going to do a quick concept mapping activity. If you don't know what concept mapping is, here is an example, right? So this is a concept map for end-of-stage renal disease. It is a great concept map we can use. If anyone knows renal disease, congratulations. If not, don't worry about it. But basically, this is where you identify a whole bunch of key terms and ideas, and then you make connections. How do they all fit together? How do you organize all this to yourself? So I want you to pause this activity, and I want you to think of a history of women's bodies. So throughout all of our readings, um, and then our current reading of the history of women's bodies, I want you to think about, throughout historical time, how have, how have women's bodies been spoken about? How have they been owned? How have they been orchestrated? How have they been policed? Think about a historical lineage. What has happened with female identified bodies over history in regards to access to resources, ownership of their own body, agency, decision-making ability, access within government, laws, things of that nature, okay? So pause this video. I want you to um, start writing down a concept of the history of women's bodies. It will be part of the discussion. So think about this historical lineage, right? So I want you to get with your group for this week and I want you to collectively construct that if that means that you are opening a Google Docs and collectively doing it simultaneously or adding on to it as the week goes um, so that everyone has a participation in it. I want this to be uploaded by midweek by Wednesday so that we can have responses to it by the other groups. Cool? All right. So that is it, and I will see you the next video.